Hello, it is Dr. Abstract here with another tutorial for working with Zim inside of Adobe Animate. Well, let's go right into Adobe Animate and see what we're doing in this tutorial. And that is talking about how we can convert these shapes from Adobe Animate into a Zim squiggle, Zim blob, so that we can do things like animate along them, um, make have the user edit them. All right, so this is ju was just made by the drawing tools. So let's have a look here. I've got my sub selection tool here, and that allows me to see the points. And now I'm looking at the points, and we can see that we've done some drawing. Uh, this was just a straight line, and then I curved it, and I added with the pen tool right here. The little pen with the plus added another control point here. And uh, this was a circle uh, or an oval, and that just stayed as an oval. This one was a square or rectangle. And then what I did is I just used the, the other pen tool and just brought a line down and a line up, which has created something a little bit odd in that there's not two points coming from here because I guess it was a square and I only needed to bend these guys and, and same with here. Boop, bending these guys as well. So that's just something to note. But anyway, here are the shapes that we've made and we can um, save these out as SVG. So let's see how we can do that. One way, uh, I don't know if there's other ways, but under more settings here, there's the, the publish settings, you've got SVG image. So that's what I used. I checked that on, I saved this up and I published it. Uh, with that, I ended up getting an SVG file. And then I looked into that SVG file just with a text editor, and you can see the SVG. And so I'll show you where that is right now. So that was exporting as SVG. That's what I exported. Uh, it's not necessarily the best to position this all in the middle. In the end, that's where it would end up being positioned. But we'd end up getting objects that kind of have a zero zero up here with all this space over here. So sometimes it's a little bit easier to control those things if you just sort of put them up in the left hand corner and then it kind of works a little bit better. But for now, uh, this is a demonstration. Uh, we'll try and mention that when we look at the code as well. Okay, so there's the stuff and now here in my actions panel or F9, what I've done is what I usually do, although all throughout the tutorials I didn't do that, I don't know why, I've docked my actions panel up here next to my timeline. So there's my timeline, there's my actions. And then this other thing, the output, I just threw down, I picked it up and docked it at the very bottom right hand corner because otherwise it just keeps on getting in the way over and over again. All right, so now when I want to see my stuff, I go like that. When I want to see my actions, I go like that. I hardly ever work on the timeline. It might be a little bit awkward to, to work. You know, I'd have to pick up, uh, what is it? This line right here. No, that was the wrong line. <laughs> Picked up the whole. Okay, uh, one of these lines, that line. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that line, and then you could get the timeline and your stage or whatever. But since I don't really work on the timeline too much, I don't mind bringing that all the way down so that I can get, oh, sorry, actions here. And double click, and I've got my stage. Okay, so anyway, we were wanting to see the actions. And that, uh, here's the SVG. So I put it, so this was the SVG right here. And where does it go to? their end of SVG and SVG tag. One way to deal with this, uh, well, another way to deal with it would be just store it in an external file, or I guess it was actually in an external file. That's where I got it from. And then reference that, bring it in. But um, if we want to use it right here in this one, it maybe is just easier to bring in uh, const SVG. So I've added that equals, and then I use a little back tick. And that back tick lets me do this across multiple lines. So the back tick is up on the top left-hand corner of your keyboard. And then we end the back tick as well. That's new to the latest JavaScript. Um, all right, so that's, that allows us to put all of this multi-line in. Don't have to worry about the quotes, etc. I don't know if this has any single uh, quotes in it, but um, that's a nice way to handle your SVG as a variable. All right, so I'm doing three things here now. I'm gonna show you how we bring parts of this. Really what we want is this path right here. We want the path, here's another path right here. This does one thing, that does another thing. 
This path does another thing, and this path does another thing. There's a little bit of a peculiarity in this SVG. It's not the end of the world, but I think if you look carefully, uh, this part right here, 29 and 23. Well, there's a 29. Maybe that wasn't it. Uh, yeah, I guess that was it. Um, anyway, I think that this right here and that are really this and that or something like that anyway. Yeah. Don't you agree? So we're going to see some peculiarities, but uh, anyway, all of these are the different parts. And one of these is a combined part. I think it has to do with the fill and the line. So if, you're, if your object had a, a fill and a line, then you end up getting, um, uh, these are for, is, see if we take a look here, stroke none. So this must be the fill, I guess. Yeah, there's the fill, stroke none. And this one is the stroke uh, version of it, but it combines the stroke. So it treats the stroke as all one layer, I guess. It, it, it's going to be different for whatever you make, obviously. Um, but there you go. And I'm not sure too much what those things are doing, but I was able to pick those out. And, oh, I was going to say, we're going to do three things. I'm going to, want, the first thing is just pick them out and build the stuff with them. And then the others are we can just pass the whole SVG into a picture and that would allow us to use it as a picture. But that's so this is Zim has an SVG class right here, SVG. And here, I'll open it up. So uh, and we pass in the whole SVG code to that and that gets a bitmap picture unless when you make your SVG, which is here, you, this is the width and the height for the SVG. And this one right here is whether we want a bitmap or not. So normally that's true. And this would just make a bitmap for us. But if we set it to false, it will end up making what's called uh, in Zim an SVG container, which holds all of the SVG parts, all of these things, but as blobs and squiggles, rectangles, trying like Zim shapes, basically. So I'm going to show you both of those as well, but not right now. First, we'll take it apart and we'll look at the parts. Okay, so all I did was basically copy this part up into here. So here is, well, the hair, I think it builds it oppositely. I built the hair first and that's the hair. Then I built the face, I think. And so that's probably the face and this is a combination of them, I'm not sure. And then I think I built the the collar last. So it, it put the, this is layer zero that, uh, oh no, it's just two. Anyway, whatever. Um, so it was a bit experimental. Uh, however, here I put the hair first. So in other words, this stuff probably comes from the bottom bit here. Okay, uh, but anyway, so here's the hair. Let's take a look at it. And note that we've used the back tick as well there, just to keep things simple, I hope, simple. And I go way over to here, and there's the end of the back tick. Could also get a end of statement on those, I think, if we take a look. Yeah, they're in variables. All right, and then that one is right here. So we've taken the three parts out. There's the collar, here's the head, and here's the data. And we've stored them in variables called hair data, head data, and collar data. Yay! Okay, then I said hair is equal to a new squiggle. Some of them uh, are going to be squiggles. Some of them are going to be blobs. So let's have a look. This one's a squiggle. Squiggles don't have an end. This one's a blob because it, or sorry, squiggles don't loop in a center, whatever you want to call it. They don't join to one another. Uh, they do have ends. And blobs don't have ends. That's right. And so these are, these are blobs. Okay, so. <clears throat> So we made a squiggle, we pass in for the points. So there's a, a points parameter. And um, well, I was just gonna see if we wanted to actually run this and see it works. But anyway, there's a points parameter. Normally we might say points eight, make eight points and it'd be just a squiggle with eight sort of bumps in it uh, thing. But you can specify an SVG path. So, so this is an SVG path. As, as points as well, 
Or you can specify Zim points, which come from our tools. So we've got, uh, if we go out to Zim here, here's Zim. Under code, under libraries right here, at the bottom, there's the pizzazz libraries, and part of that was the paths right here. So we can make paths. Uh, so that's a path right there. Uh, we can draw here. So here I am drawing. And then we hit code, and we could pass this bit right into the squiggle, or well, in this case, it was a blob. We could pass that into the blob, and the blob would make, would make the heart. And here's the squiggle code for that, and we pass that into a squiggle, and that's what we would get. Uh, there's also different ones here that you can play around with if you so desire. And if you ever make any, you're welcome to tell us and we can add them to this list of stuff. All right. So anyway, that's how we often make paths in Zim. But now here we are showing you how we can actually use Adobe Animate to make the paths as well and then convert to SVG and bring them into Zim that way. So that's the point of this tutorial. And we've set the colors. So the colors are kind of independent. We're not pulling any color data from this. The color data came from uh, up here more so than the path data itself. So when we go to make the SVG containers, we do pull from the color data as well and the stroke data and stuff. But here, when we've just pulled out the path, we can choose our own colors. So we're choosing a color for this squiggle of dark. That's a Zim color. It can be any HTML color. For instance, it could be number sign one, two, three, which is a really dark blue, or uh, it could be blue, which with quotes is HTML color. Without quotes is a Zim color blue, and that would make Zim color blue. Another Zim color is dark, and that's what we made it. And there we've set a thickness for that squiggle. We've also set it to interactive false. Otherwise, it's going to be interactive. And for this example, we didn't want it to be interactive because we're animating this little triangle along it. So we've made a little triangle. We're animating it along the path that is the hair. So you can specify for animating along a path, you can specify a blob or a squiggle. That's why it's important to be able to get blobs and squiggles because if you want to animate along paths in Zim or drag along paths, it's they need to be a blob or a squiggle. Okay, and we're doing that in this amount of time. We're rewinding and we're looping. One thing to note is that triangle's pointing up. By default, we assume that the thing you're animating along a path is going to orient like as you're moving to the right. So we're rotating the triangle that points up. We're pointing that to the right. And you've got to add that to the stage. It doesn't really matter where you add it because animate's going to animate it along the path. Okay, so that's going to give us a triangle that's animating along the hair. Are you excited? Ooh, can't wait to see that. And here we have the head. This is the head blob. We've changed the color to brown. So this is that will be the color of the inside of the blob or the actual blob. And here's the border color is dark and the border width. Okay, so we've got the head built from the head data. And along the head, what we're doing is we're passing, no, we didn't even add the head to the stage or yet, you'd have to add it to see it, but we're passing the head into new beads. So beads, we can make beads from any path, from a squiggle or a blob, and beads are as, as you might expect, uh, they put things along the path like beads. <laughs> and here, what we're putting along the path this time is a new circle. And the circle will be quite small, a five radius. And we're going to randomly pick from red, green, or blue, give a border color and two, and turn the beads interactive false. So you can't interact with the beads. Okay, and that we're adding to the stage as well. The add twos are, in both cases, we just added two. That means they'll be placed in the same place as our original SVG pointed to. So hopefully centered. Uh, like I said, that's not necessarily the best because we often want to do, say, hit tests on objects. And this would be a very awkward shape to hit test. It has, its bounds are wrong. The bounds aren't really around the object. The bounds are starting from the top left corner. There's a lot of space, etc. So it might be better to tighten up by 
um, putting your object in the first place up in the top left corner and then giving it a proper width and a height then you can move that thing around you can do hit tests against it uh, you can position it against the the left right top bottom properly because the bounds are correct it's always nice to have the right the, the right bounds but that's pretty pretty easy to do and i'm not going to bother talking about it in this video all right uh so or any more about it <laughs> we got beads great that's neat and next, the last thing is the collar. And so there's the collar. And we've just left the collar a normal blob. The only thing that we did a little bit differently. So we passed in the collar points. We made it blue, added the border. The only thing we did a little bit differently is started off not showing the controls. By default, blobs and squiggles will show their controls. So if we did that, the controls would show. And if you click off the blob or squiggle, the controls get hidden. Okay, so this hasn't been a very visual, like it's a big grand surprise is about to <laughs> come out here. Uh, usually I would do each step at a time and, and, you know, show you specifically what's happening that relates to where our code was. But I think our code is easy enough to handle uh, and uh, it's kind of like fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like when we try it out. All right, so the only thing we did is hide the controls to start. And that means that you would have to click on those controls or click on the blob to see those controls. We're not even using our SVG, so all this stuff could have been commented out. It was just put in there to uh, have a look, uh, you know, to be able to copy the parts from it. All right, so that's not even being used. It's just being stored in a variable. We're, we're not using it at the moment. We're going to use it down below with these ones in just a moment. All right, so let's see what this code does. Are you ready? Control Enter and OMG, look at that. Whee! Is that what you were expecting? <laughs> so there it is. We've got, and these ones are not editable. So when I click on them, nothing happens. We've got a, a triangle that's following along a path. And it, I can just see on the end, it looks like we treat our ends a little bit differently or something like that. Uh, there's a little bit of the other SVG pointing through. So there's what the beads made. Here's our interactive, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and there's the thing underneath, actually, that's that's the one underneath. So this is the, the collar. That's the actual original SVG right there, uh, which you can now hide or remove if you so desire. And as you can see here, we can move this around. There's one thing that was a little bit odd, and I think it has to do with the sticks. Uh, if we, if we pick up this one, I don't know which one was it. There, that that one. It's got an empty one hidden underneath it. And it's like, oh, and that one's good. But this one, it's got an empty one hidden underneath it. So something in the construction along the way. Uh, normally, we're never really supposed to see. Do we ever see that? I don't know. Let's see, do, do we ever have only one stick? So there's two sticks. I guess we can have one stick by just hiding this other stick like right, right in behind there. So the yellows came up. Normally we have two sticks on everything like that. And like I said, it was a bit unusual to have one stick coming out of it. What's really happened is the one stick is in behind that circle and it just it ends up looking like this. <laughs> but anyway, it, we, we don't really want that those extra ones that are there. Let me just refresh this. Mm, well, let me run it again. Put the control enter. Put the refresh, I lost it. Um, we don't want, what was it, this one? Yeah, so we don't need that. If, if you want, you can go shift click and that one disappears. And so that's gone, mind you, that's you know, a little bit annoying to have to do that, shift click. Uh, by the way, blobs and squiggles. So in the end, it, it, it might end up being more robust making these these points if you really uh, think about it to make the points inside, uh, you know, of the the path tool rather than um, rather than inside animate. But if if you can see, we're animating along the path just fine from that SVG, and that's good. But if you're planning on using, I'll show you what I mean as soon as we look at those other uh, two examples. The the ending, the, the paths that are being made from it are a little bit more complicated than they might be because uh, it is a complicated system to, to build this kind of stuff. 
but uh, it's nice. Like, here we go. I'm holding down the control and clicking, and now I can move both those ends. So we've, we've got a lot of good features in our uh, blobs and squiggles. All right, so leaving that alone for now, let's go back and comment out this code. So, chuka chuka chuka. There we go. That was exciting, though. Oh, I have to do something to comment. I want a hotkey to comment, please. Comment. Do I have one? Comment selection. I'm not sure if there is a hotkey to comment. I haven't found one, but it would be nice to have it. There, we've commented that out. Now we're going to use this SVG down below inside of a pick. So if I bring this in, may as well make it drag to dot drag just so we can see it compared to the other one. And I go control enter. And now what it's done is it's made an SVG picture out of that SVG code that is basically the same as the SVG, as, as you can see. All right, uh, so there, I don't know if there'd be any reason to do that. Probably not. You could just zimify the, the picture as a movie clip and zimify it, and then you'd have roughly the same thing. Uh, that's a picture. And then here, there would be a reason to do this, possibly. And this is an SVG holder, which converts it to SV, uh, to, to, to blobs and squiggles. So now I go control enter. And here are the blobs and squiggles that it made. Remember, blobs and squiggles start off with their control showing. And when I click off, the controls go away. So here's a blob. There's the extra blob that gets made that's black. Here's a blob. There's the extra blob that gets made. And then the squiggle is, is made, but as you can see, the squiggle's not as smooth as it might be. <laughs> so the good thing about having this is all of a sudden, people can start drawing with it or, or you know, moving things about. No longer is it just, it's like what you had in Flash to start, or sorry, in Animate to start. You've got um, editable lines here. But there's just like too many <laughs> of these of these lines, especially on the on the squiggle here. Let's see if we can move the squiggle. There we are moving the squiggle, and as you can see, lots of lines and almost overlapping so much that you can't really tell what's going on with the lines. That's why and it is understandable. This was a freeform line, and SVG is actually code that is made out of Bezier's or well, whatever. You know. Uh, quadratic equations and quintic equations. So you, it, it's kind of as expected that it made that, it approximates the lines that you're drawing freeform kind of with hand. Well, actually, I don't know that for sure. Now, I guess that's not really the case, is it? Because <clears throat> you're also using Bezier controls as you're drawing the lines. Mm, well, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I, I, that's a, a bit of a mess there. You could start going through and deleting some of these extra things uh, if, if you so desire. By the way, you can also add. So we were looking at this simple one later. If I add that, uh, so let's refresh this. Does it come out? The, again, the good thing is now the user can make it look different. That's the point of this is that we've got our controls. If I double click this, I can convert to the, uh, the two-sided one. There we go. Okay. So the, the point of it is to help the users, blobs and squiggles, to help the users make art, not you making art in, in Adobe Animate and saying, here, look at my art. It's sort of like, here's some stuff. Now you, the user, the end user, can make the art from that. So there you go. I think that's a good summary of what's happening when we're using blobs and, or sorry, SVG here with Zim, with blobs and squiggles. And we saw some examples of the types of things that can be made with, um, or that can be done with blobs and squiggles. There's more. We can do shape tweens between bob, blobs and squiggles. We can do hit tests on blobs and squiggles, but uh, the, certainly the animating along and the dragging along. So we had just shown a tutorial, go back and take a look at a tutorial on how to uh, drag along a path. Let me just uncomment this. Um, oh, there it is all, all together. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mess with things on top of other things. It's like, oh, you know, go back to the, uh, whatever was there a beginning one where it was working at? Uh, okay, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I just need to comment out these. One sec. Boop. There we go. Yeah, let's try that again. There we go. 
I was just trying to summarize. So there's our triangle moving along the path. If we go out and take a look at the Zim site, just for a sec, and scroll on down. Let's open that up, scroll on down to the vids, and we take a look at the and last- parameters oh. as- Pause, no more talk, no double talking, please. Uh, that one was, yeah, was this it? Yeah, that was the video on the code pen. Sure. Right. So this and, is the... Uh, what we did was we showed how to here. See if there's an example of it working around. <laughs> ah, blobs and squiggles anyway, but we were dragging along a path. So this was uh, an earlier tutorial on how to drag along a path. All right, great. Uh, that's it for, for now. I am Dr. Abstract. Oh, not an explorer. <laughs> we do explorers as well. This is a tutorial. That's this one right here. So the Zim Shim tutorials for Adobe Animate. Come on into Zim at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. And we'll show you, oh crap, I forgot to show you how to even get all that working, didn't I? All right, uh, one sec. So let's bring her back. Just in case you've never been here uh, before doing any Zim work, there was one step that we didn't show you back in the animate, and that is how do we get Zim active? And that's in all the other tutorials, though, certainly right in the beginning tutorials. We went under more settings here. We hit HTML and JavaScript, and we imported this Zim shim right here, and that gets Zim working with all uh, with all this stuff and where you can find that zim shim uh, zip file is under the code section right here in zim zimjs.com code and then scroll down to features and right here is zim shim with adobe animate don't get confused with interactive animation that's sprites uh, right there so if we click that here's the zip file right here and there's all those other tutorials, and that's how to get all this stuff set up, okay? So, sorry, forgot to uh, mention that in the video earlier, that you would need Zim for all of this stuff to work. It comes from that zip file, and it gets stuck into Adobe Animate through the import a new HTML. We also made this center stage responsive and scale too. So those are some of the things we did there. This example we happen to do with the, uh, how do I get back out of here? Uh, with a 500 by 400, just to sort of show you that SVG uh, and Bezier handles a little bit easier. Okay, there, now we can go back to Zim Explore. Ha ha ha, teasing. We can go back to tutorials with Dr. Abstract, yes. Uh, see you guys later. Come join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. We'd love to see you there. You're welcome to ask questions on the Adobe forum too, and we'll try and keep track. Cheers. Bye-bye.